Hello everyone, I'm Bernard and this is my new channel. Today we'll be discussing the iPad OS, which I have from the very first developer beta. Now it's running developer beta 4, so I already have some thoughts. I know that the most important question most of you will ask is, is the iPad OS really that good? Well, this is iPad. Actually, it's a chimichanga, but I'm making a point because this is iPad, not iPad OS. But before we throw away all the MacBooks in all this excitement, let's just remember that iPad OS is not by any means a Mac OS on an iPad. And it's good. Here's why. iOS is touch optimized, why Mac OS isn't. If they wanted to make Mac OS touch compatible, they would have to change the entire UI, rebuild it from scratch basically, while all that iOS was missing was a few key elements like proper file system or a desktop class browsing. Here's the story. Back in 2015, I was buying a computer for my university and I was considering the 12.9 inch iPad Pro back then. It seemed a great deal for me because I love to draw and the iPad Pro in 2015 was cheaper than the baseline MacBook Pro, even including the keyboard and styles. What ultimately stopped me from buying the iPad was the fact that you couldn't even plug and USB thumb drive to it, not to mention other things. And on a university it can be a deal breaker already, but the fact that you couldn't download the zip files, and there were many such files with uh, past tests or notes from older students. Finally, the fact that many of my university's websites didn't work on a mobile browser, making it really hard to sign up for some classes or summer practices. I went with the 13-inch MacBook Pro. But now, iPadOS fixes all the issues mentioned before, so let's see how it works on my trusty old 9.7-inch iPad Pro. Ok, keep in mind that this is almost 3.5 year old device, which was already watered down 2015 iPad Pro, and it's running developer beta, so let's just say these are not the perfect conditions to run the test. And despite that, it works just fantastic. Look at it. All the apps open crazy fast. Actually, it is faster than already fast iOS 12. Ok, so let's start with the first thing that stopped me from buying iPad 4 years ago, using thumb drive. Let's plug it in, obviously with a dongle. And mind you, it had to be this particular adapter with one USB port and additional power input and original Apple one, otherwise it won't work. I have it linked in the description below, so we don't mistake it. Ok, so now I will plug it in and we need to open the files up first. Here in the locations uh, should appear the USB once it's plugged. Ok, let's check it out and uh, after a few seconds we have it here as the no name. So let's tap on it and I prepared a test folder. Let's see what's in it. Ok, so in the test folder we have obviously a zip file. Let's see if it will open now and it does, so it's already great. Now in the files app we have the preview, so we can find the interesting part and copy it to my biology notes. Ok, let's copy it here and open the notes app. Now in the notes app we can already use the new three finger gesture. So it's like reverse pinch and we have it paste, uh, three fingers to undo, we can obviously use the old method or we can hold three fingers to open this menu to choose an action. It's really handy on a smaller screen. Now we can triple tap to select particular sentence or quadruple tap to select whole paragraph. I think it's one of the greatest new features here on iOS 13. But iPad OS doesn't only bring new features, it improves the old one like multitasking as well. Before we had split screen with two apps and slide over app and picture in picture but it doesn't work with YouTube so meh. That's three apps in total. And while on Galaxy Fold you could have also floating windows with up to eight apps. Why would I ever want to do that though? It was highly impractical. We aren't octopuses and we don't have enough arms to operate 8 apps at once and not enough screen estate. 
what is much better approach is the now improved app switching in iPad OS. You can now juggle slide over apps just like on iPhone 10, and it's so good. It's fun, fast, and so useful. You can check something online to copy it to your essay. You can respond to your friends on iMessage and write to those who only use Messenger. You can slide on the Files app or Photo app just to copy anything from there. You can open third-party calculator. You get the point. You can have all the apps I mentioned and more available basically all the time with a quick and easy access. It reminds me some of the extra desktops on Mac which was already perfect way to multitask if you didn't have those ridiculously big monitors. So, with the powerful and fun multitasking, proper files app working with any files including zip and any drives including hard drives, the only thing that was missing was the full-size Safari. And it was really infuriating. Like, in theory, you could ask the Safari to open the desktop version, but it rarely worked, like it's almost never worked for me. Now, iPad doesn't ask for a full desktop version, it simply disguises itself as a MacBook, so the web page is displayed as for MacBook, and then adjusts the web page to be more touch friendly. Great solution. And it actually opened more advantages than I thought previously, like access to a full YouTube studio is really great, like the Web page is so much better than this 2010 like app or Google Docs or finally my university's web pages. <laughs> like, finally. Uh, also, fun fact on Facebook, you have those little messenger windows. Neat. Obviously, there are many, many more new features in iPad OS like multi window in apps other than Safari, new screenshotting of full websites, new more dense home screen widgets that even work with third-party calculator, because there is no first-party calculator, dark mode, improved photos app, video editing, speed enhancements, like I can't stress enough how fast the iOS and iPadOS 13 are, find my app, new reminders, smaller app downloads, download manager in Safari, mouse support, memory stickers with AirPods, and more. But to answer the big question, can the iPad replace your computer? I can tell you it can for me. If I were to buy a computer for my university today, I would totally go with the iPad. I'm not engineering or IT student though, so the OS may still be a limitation for you. My friend Peter had to have a particular app that was only available on Windows, so he couldn't even have a MacBook. Oh, so iPad still wouldn't be an option for him even with the iPad OS. But basically, if you're not required to use a specific app, and you could live with the macOS in the first place. I think that iPadOS could really fulfill most of your needs. It now has an app for almost any situation. Example, if you're not required to use the Final Cut Pro 10 or Adobe Premiere Pro in your workplace and you can use any app for editing, the Luma Fusion is really a great alternative and it's so much cheaper with, no, with virtually no compromises in the capabilities. Actually, I think I'll be getting rid of my old MacBook and old iPad in favor of one device, the new iPad Pro. Uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is a new channel and a new show, so if you liked it, hit a thumbs up and please subscribe, because I'm really excited to prepare more and more content. I won't float you with some spam, I would probably make up two videos a month now, but all the support is really appreciated. Thank you and see you in the next one. This is an iPad OS, and let's just say it's an absolute unit. <laughs>